Well, good morning, Meadow Spring. It's great to have you here. If you're out in the nook or the lobby, you want to make your way on in here so you don't miss any of the fun, because uh, that's one of the things we like to do here at Meadow Spring is we like to laugh, we like to have fun. What you just saw is a series that's starting in two weeks from today called At the Movies. This is going to be a very unique series for us. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take four popular movies and we're going to use them one each week to launch into uh, issues about God and issues about faith. And here's the deal. This is a series that you're going to want to do everything possible to invite someone to come or invite as many people as you can to come to this. Uh, there's already some buzz about this and some people who are saying, you know, I wonder what this is going to be about. I'm curious. And so they're going to be they're going to be coming to this two weeks from today. Now, one of the things, and especially if you're watching online, if you are an online watcher, or attender of Meadow Spring, the At The Movie series will not be on the internet. It will not be online. We will not be live streaming it simply because we're going to be using some of the material and some of the movie clips, and we've got to be careful of, of what goes on the internet that we do. So anyway, uh, invite someone to come with you. Today's service is, uh, we're looking forward to it. It's the third Sunday in this series that we're calling The Red Zone. We're going to sing some songs, and then we're going to have a challenge, because here's the deal. You know, we can talk all we want about what it means to be a church. But until we really start putting our feet to the path and start doing it, it doesn't make any difference. And so today we're going to talk about actual, actually what does it mean to put it into practice. And, uh, and so that's going to be happening a little bit later on. Everybody playing their part. It's not about me. It's about others. But to begin with, we're going to be singing some songs and doing some worship. And the first song that we're singing is called The Lion and the Lamb two creatures that could almost be, you couldn't find anything more opposite than a lion or a lamb. But Jesus is called the lion, he's called the lamb. He's called the lion because he's majestic. He's got royalty, he's got strength, he's a powerful king. He's fierce in his love for us. He's called the lamb because he's the perfect sacrifice. The lamb that was slain for our sin, in fact, one commentator said this, Jesus endured death as a lamb. He devoured it as a lion. Let's stand and let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity and privilege that we have as a church family to come together and to worship you. We pray that what we sing, what we say, what we think, what we do in this next hour We'll be focused on you, we'll point to you, and then we will worship and honor you. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
comes to save The city set the county to sweep Who can stop the world almighty? Our God is the light The light of Judah He's roaring with power And fighting our battles Every knee will bow before Him Our God is the light of the world this might breaks a change Oh <laughs> 
Christ is my firm foundation. There's no other basis to which I can place my life that will have a better founding. And because of this, we can know that God has a plan for us. And not just a plan, but a plan to prosper us. So let's just focus on that. Let's focus on him this morning. Still got 
Lord Jesus, we do thank you. We do thank you because not only, not only are you working in the midst of this place, but you're working out in the streets. I pray that we can spread that message to all who have ears. We love you, Jesus. All this we pray in your name. Amen. You may be seated. things I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, something's got in my throat. One of the things I forgot to mention earlier is uh, not only is At The Movies starting on um, two weeks from today, October 1st, but on October 8th, that's three weeks from today, we're starting a brand new ministry uh, that we've never, ever, 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 ever done before. And that's called New Community, and it's going to be Sunday nights on the second and fourth Sunday nights of the month at 530. And what it is, is it's, we're setting aside all the tech and the lights and the projection, and, and we're going to open up the Bible, and we're going to just dig deep into it. And uh, we're starting off with the book of Romans, which is a phenomenal book, and we're going to look at... Uh, there's just, well, I don't want to ruin it, but uh, there's just a lot in Romans that's very contemporary, very refreshing and relevant to our lives today. So uh, that starts October 8th um, at 530 uh, here at Meadow Spring. So this is the third week in this series that we've been in called The Red Zone. And just a little bit of a refresher, The Red Zone is that last 20 yards before you score a touchdown on a football field. And in the red zone, the team will do things that they don't do in the other 80 yards. Uh, The strategy changes. The intensity goes up. uh, Everybody's heightened in what they're going to be doing. And we're calling it the red zone because Meadow Spring and our mission of guiding people in a refreshing relationship with Christ necessitates us being in the red zone of ministry, guiding people in a refreshing with relationship with Jesus Christ, we must be in the red zone if we're going to see that happen. Two weeks ago, we talked about we are faith-filled, big-thinking risk-takers. That's got to happen during the, uh, in, in the red zone. We talked about that we will pray bold, impossible prayers and ask God for the impossible. To be in the red zone, we will ask and pray bold prayers. And then last week, if you were with us, we talked about how our vision must be fueled by Scripture. Uh, If you look through Scripture, you see that uh, when, when, when God says something and there's obedience, it's followed by success. And our intent, we work hard at not turning from the right or turning from the left, but, but be our vision being fueled by Scripture. And we talked about four things, how that spelled out four ways last Sunday coming from the book of Zechariah. We care for the lost. Uh, we seek the young. We heal the hurting. And we feed the healthy. And, but here's, here's the deal. 
We can talk all we want about our vision, and we can have the greatest vision in the world. We can sound and use verbiage that just turns everybody on. I mean, it's just amazing. But there comes a time when you've got to put it into play. Again, referring to a football team, you can have your locker room talks and you can have the coach pump up the team before and at halftime and and during the week you can practice and things like that. But until you actually get in the game and start doing it, it doesn't make a difference. You can have the greatest plays in the world. The same with Meadow Spring. We can have a great, great, great vision. But if we don't put it into practice, it doesn't mean anything. And so today, we're going to talk about that. And then next Sunday, we're, as we wrap this up, we're going to talk even more about the specifics. By the way, next week is going to be a great Sunday. We've got the kids that are going to be singing with us again up on stage. Uh, it is our Next week is our uh, celebration of 25 years of ministry as a church. And we're really going to uh, do some, some cool things next Sunday. So make it a point to be here and nudge those around you to make sure they're here too. But if you look in the New Testament, there's a familiar story to some of you called the, some, the uh, woman at the well in John chapter 4. And what's happening is Jesus is walking and traveling, and rather than going around Samaria, which most Jews did, he went through Samaria. And as he was going through Samaria, he gets tired, and so he and his disciples, they stop to rest. And his disciples leave to go into town to find some food and find something to eat, and Jesus stays at this well. And a woman comes, and Jesus has this lengthy conversation with this woman, and she basically discovers that Jesus is the Son of God, and she goes back into town to tell her friends and her family. Well, when she's gone, the disciples come back, and that's where I want to begin reading in John chapter 4, this interaction that the disciples have with Jesus. In John chapter 4, beginning with verse 31, it says, Meanwhile, Jesus' disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? Verse 34, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Verse 34, look at that again. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me to finish his work. Jesus is saying, my food, my nourishment, what I get nourished and filled up on is different than what our nature is. When everyone else thinks about fill me, fill me, fill me, what actually Jesus says, what actually fills me is to fill others. Uh, What nourishes me is to pour into the lives of others and to to serve others, finish the task that God sent me to do. You see, Jesus was not concerned about consuming. He wasn't concerned about me. Um, He was concerned about contributing. It wasn't about him. It was about others. It wasn't about what he wanted, what he when he contributed to the lives of others, that actually nourished him in a way that you don't understand until you are feeding, filling, serving other people. And that goes against our nature. As human beings, it goes against our human nature, the core of who we are. Because the reality is, In our world today, we by nature are very self-centered, selfish people. I mean, our number one look out for is the three most important people in my life, and that is me, myself, and I. If, If you don't believe me, just ask yourself this. Do you ever have to teach a two year old how to be selfish? 
I mean, how many of you parents woke up with your two-year-old and said, okay, honey, today we're going to teach you how to be selfish. In fact, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a toy and let you play with it, and then I'm going to come and I'm going to take that toy away from you, and what I want you to do, I want you to scream bloody murder. That's being selfish. And the louder you scream, the higher grade you get for being selfish. We don't do that. Why? Because it's just in our nature to be selfish and self-centered. And Jesus is saying, I have a higher calling than just thinking about me. I want to contribute to the lives of others. It's not about me. It's about others. The year was 1967. McDonald's. Growing up, if you enjoyed fast food hamburgers, you would have remembered two all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. How many remember that? Why are there only like three hands that went up? I don't remember it. I was just, I just did some internet research and found it. You remember this growing up, that if you walked into McDonald's and you ordered a Big Mac, you would get two all-beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. No change. Every Big Mac was exactly the same. Every single time, guaranteed, that's what you got until until another restaurant did something that changed the game plan for all restaurants. It's 1974. Burger King changed everything because they came out with the slogan, have it your way. I mean, before Burger King, if you walked in and you ordered a hamburger with tomatoes and pickles and onions and ketchup. You got a hamburger with tomatoes, pickles, onions, and ketchup. But Burger King said, hold the pickles, hold the lettuce. (laughs) See, that's my audition for the worship team. (laughs) Nathan wouldn't do it any other way, so I had to fit in Special orders don't upset us. You don't want pickles? You don't have to have pickles. How can we make it right just for you? Because this Burger King, this burger is about you. I want extra pickles? You got it. I don't want onions? No problem. I want mayonnaise? You got it. Well, I'm a mustard person. Then Then we'll put mustard on it for you. I mean, all of a sudden, you were in charge. It was about you and what you wanted. You see, we live in a consumer-minded society. It's all about me. It's all about what do I want. It's all about what makes me feel good. And tragically, that mindset has morphed and has bled over into the local church. I'm not being fed. The worship didn't do anything for me. There are not any programs or ministries for me. But here's the deal, and this is the main point today. We are not spiritual consumers. We are spiritual contributors. And if we as a church, as a Meadow Spring Church, are going to dominate and draw people in a refreshing relationship with Jesus Christ, we have got to be committed to being spiritual contributors not spiritual consumers. Why? Because the church does not exist for us. We exist for the world. And that's going to disturb some of you. That's going to challenge some of your thinking. Because that understanding changes everything. If we are going to care for the lost, if we are going to seek the young, if we're going to heal the injured, if we're going to feed the healthy, 
We must be spiritual contributors, not spiritual consumers. The church does not exist for us. We exist for the world to serve and to reach the world. Our food is something many people don't understand. Our food, what fills us up is to do the will of God, to be like Jesus, to not focus on self but to focus on others. Not serving me, but serving other people. And here's the deal. God has given you and I certain gifts to fulfill this. And spreading his love and his grace and his forgiveness. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have at least one, probably more than one, what the Bible calls spiritual gifts which is something unique God has given you. Two things about spiritual gifts. Number one, God calls you to serve in his church. As a spiritual contributor, God calls you to serve in his church, and he equips you with the gifts and the abilities to do that. God doesn't say, okay, go get them. I'm just going to sit back and watch you. No, God equips you. Again, the football team in the red zone. The, the coaches don't say it's all up to you. No, they've equipped them. You are gifted. You are called. You are set apart to use your gifts to make a difference in the church. Romans 12, 6 through 8. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of the others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Now, there are other gifts that Paul doesn't list here. He just actually lists seven. So if you were a follower of Christ, the question is, what is your gift? And you go, well, I don't even, I don't know what my gift is. Let me help you try to understand what your gift might be. Let's, let's say I've got an apple pie. <clears throat> and as I'm cutting this apple pie, plop, I spill it on my lap, just apple pie all over the place. What do you do about that? How do you react to that? If you say, oh, no, that's horrible. Here, let me clean it up for you. You just sit there and let me clean it up for you, and we'll be all right. If that's you, most likely you have the gift of serving. You like to help others, and you like to serve. And a lot of times you like to serve behind the scenes. You, you don't want to get up in front of people. If you say, wow, I can't believe that happened. Here, let me buy you a new pie. In fact, let me buy new pies for everybody, and we'll make this right. If that's you, you have the gift of giving. And if you say, hey, don't worry, we can get this organized in no time. Tell you what. You go do this, and you go do that, and you go do this, and you go do that, and we'll get this all squared away, and, and we'll be up and running before you know it. They're kind of bossy. You've got the gift of leadership. Why are you looking at me like that? If you start laughing, <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe you did that. I do that too. In fact, here, let me show you. And I throw the pie on myself. Oh, look at that. You know, we all have mistakes. If that's you, you have the gift of encouragement. You want to make people feel good. You want to encourage them a lot of times through humor. Maybe you say, oh, no, I feel so bad for you. I'm, I'm so sorry this happened. Let me... Can we pray about it right now? You've got kindness. You're empathetic. You're, you like to pray. You like to, to, to encourage people through being empathetic to them. 
And some of you would say, you know what? There's a better way to eat apple pie anyway. In fact, I've got a chart here. Let me show you how to, how to eat apple pie the right way. In fact, the Hebrew word for apple pie is haka maka shaka, you know. <laughs> you know, if that's you, you've got the gift of teaching. And there's other spiritual gifts in the Bible. There's the spiritual gift of hospitality. You like to entertain people and just make people feel at home. There's the spiritual gift of prayer. You just, you're one, of the, you're one of the first people to say, how can I pray? I want to pray for you. And you do pray. There's the spiritual gift of faith. You take risks and, and you really trust God for things. There's the spiritual gift of music. You love to sing or playing instrument. I mean, and there's others. In fact, in the seat in front of you is a connect card. Would you take that connect card? I want to show you something. On the back of that connect card, on the far left side, there are a whole bunch of different ministries. Ministries that your spiritual gift can supply and take it to the next level. Like metal kids, oh, I'm not any good with kids. I couldn't teach kids. It's not just teaching, it's helping, it's being at the check-in. Teens, I'm not any good with teens. It's not just teaching teens. It's building relationships with teens. First impressions. If you've got the gift of hospitality, first impressions is a great ministry to be involved in, just helping people feel welcome and then feel at home and, and glad you're here. The band and tech. If you like, if you've got the gift of music or playing an instrument or singing, I'm not talking about singing in the shower or, or driving down the road with the windows up. Missions team. Did you know the missions is, so often we think of missions as overseas, another country. Missions is also local. Maybe you've got a heart for hurting people here locally. So that's where Simpson House and Feeding My Starving Children. The bottom line is, where will you serve? You know, maybe you're already serving, and I say, that's awesome, thank you. But maybe you're not. You know, God has given you gifts to use in the church. He wants every person to be active, making a difference in the church. There's something for every person to do. If you are here at Meadow Spring, and maybe you're just checking it out, which I'm glad you're here. But if Meadow Spring is your church home, you've got something to make this church more vibrant, to be more effective in the red zone. God wants his church to be filled with people who have the attitude of not it's about me, but have the attitude of it's about others, it's about serving, it's not about getting, it's about giving. Second thing. Not only does God want you to be serving in the church, but God wants you to be serving in the world. God calls you to serve in his church. He also calls you to serve in the world. Look at what Jesus says in Matthew 5. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Let your light shine into all the world that they may see your good deeds. We're to be like Jesus, right? He came to seek and to serve the lost. He, he loved the unlovely. He touched those others wouldn't touch. He rubbed shoulders with the outcast. He spent time with the religious rejects. He, his actions pointed to the Father. Let me ask you this. Not what happens in these four walls, because it's easy to point to Jesus when you come to church. But when you're not here during the week, what do your actions do as far as pointing to Jesus? Where is your light shining? You know, it's a sad commentary on the church and Christianity that too often... We are known for what we're against. 
Let's change that. Let's shed light on what we are for. Let's shout loud what we are for. We are for grace. We are for love. We are for mercy. We are for compassion. We are for giving. We are for serving. We are for smiling. Too many Christians look like they died six months ago and they just forgot to lay down. Smile. Tell your face that the tomb is empty. And let other people see it. You know, maybe they will ask you or wonder for themselves, what's different about you? What makes you tick? Why did you react to disaster that way? Why aren't you bothered by that? And it gives you a chance to share what's behind why you do what you do. Or, and maybe they will say yes to Jesus. See, we're not only called to serve in the church, we're called to serve in the world. How can you let your light shine before men if you're not before men? Well, I don't have time. I'm going to step on some toes here. I don't have time. Why? Well, because I have a Bible study to go to. In fact, I have one, I have one every night of the week. Please understand what I say here. You don't need another Bible study. Take opportunities to get involved with organizations in the community where you can serve and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Community committees, neighborhood groups, coaching of a child's sports team, chaperoning school activities, getting involved with the parent group. How can you let your light shine before men in the world. Next week, we are going to, how does all this fit? Because I just probably shocked some of you by saying you don't need another Bible study. I'm not against Bible study. In fact, we, we need solid Bible studies. But what are you doing with your schedule? You know, I envision our church being greater than what I see today. We love others more than we've been loved. We give more than we've received. We serve more than we've been served. I envision Meadow being filled with people who say, you know what? It's not about me. It's about serving others. It's about serving others in the church and in the world. Let's stand and close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the challenge that you put before us to be like you, to seek and to serve and to go after the lost and to prioritize reaching and caring for children and teens and for healing the hurting and feeding the healthy. Father, I pray for us as a church that we will not just talk about it, but we will be a church filled with people who we don't look in the mirror and say, it's about me, but we look in the mirror and say, it's about serving. It's about reaching and touching those that others won't touch. It's about rubbing shoulders with the unlovely. It's about spending time with those that other religious groups won't spend time with. And, and, all, in that, and, and all of that sharing the grace and love and compassion of Jesus, using our light to shine before men so that they will notice there's something different, refreshingly different about that person. Father, give us the opportunities to do that, to shine before men, to serve others. Thank you that the tomb is empty and that you have empowered us with gifts to serve you and to serve others. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming. Have a great day.